This is the installation of the Viking heater in a Zenith 750 airplane, specifically to the 130 engine. We're going to start up at the cylinder head where the hot coolant exits after it has been heated by the engine. And it is then going to be routed from there to your heater core, which is inside the plane. Up here, we have two brass fittings that you install after removing the quarter inch NPT plug that the engine is shipped with. Keep in mind that this is a cast elbow, an aluminum cast elbow, so you will be relying on the 567 Teflon based thread sealer to do the sealing, not by cranking the fittings in really hard because you will or you might crack the aluminum if you do that. So install the 90 degree fitting first, turn it almost as far in as you want, have it facing the propeller, and then install the second barbed fitting into that and then rotate both of them up in order to get what you see here where the hose can go up and above the gearbox. And then we're gonna route it from there after installing the clamp. The clamps, by the way, that are supplied, you will squeeze them or you will tighten them almost so that they are closed. And that works just fine with that diameter hose and that hose barb. Now, if we follow that hose on, on this installation, we routed it underneath the intake manifold and then it comes back out here. Um, actually, we, I'm mixing up two of them. That one actually goes clear through the intake manifold here and it has a straight shot into the heater. And then we have another clamp there. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that part of it, but let's just trace the other hose, which is the return right here. This is the opposite side of the heater core. And then it runs here. We, we tied it to the alternator here. Every installation would be slightly different there, but if you just wanna copy this, this is one way to do it. Then it goes up underneath the intake manifold here and your engine is shipped with the proper fittings there. Again, remove the plug, install the 90 degree, and install the um, hose clamp, tighten it almost like within a 16th of an inch of being fully compressed. So that's all you're gonna do outside in the engine compartment. Um, we take a quick look at the heater here, behind the firewall. That's basically what it looks like. It has a heater core, uh, which is basically a radiator element. And then it has two fans underneath like that, and the fans are pulling down. And we'll power them up in a little bit here, and you can kind of hear them run. What we ended up doing as far as mounting the heater is we were very careful that after we had placed other things like the ECU and, and um, our coolant bottle and so forth and so on, we ended up having this location right here with a whole in this corner and one over there. The way we did that is we drilled one hole in this corner initially up to about seven sixteenths of an inch and we were able to put one of the ends of the heater in and by doing so precisely in the hole we were able to mark the other side precisely. The next thing we did was we drilled the holes up to full size which would be the same size as the diameter of the heater hose itself. And that's what that looks like. So that's a five eighths or three eighths inside diameter hose that is supplied with the kit. Why do we do that? Why would we put the hose through the sharp firewall? We do that because the hose itself is used as the, the grommet. The first part of the hose is the grommet and the clamp is on the outside of the firewall, which means that you even if the firewall were to rub against this, uh, it can never leak because the clamp is further out. So it serves as a grommet and a clamping area. So that's the way you would you would have a helper or yourself push the heater against the firewall. And then going back outside here, we look at the clamps on the outside of the firewall. And you would then have yourself or your helper tighten the clamps and they will be all the way up against the firewall that helps keep the heater from moving back and forth. And we can use that as two mounting locations for the firewall because the hose, it's, it's riding on that hose like we talked about. And then the, other, the only other thing we have to do inside is support the heater 
vertically up and down. And we did that with this strap, very easy to do, just a little Z-bend. And as you can tell, the heater is very, very secure the way it's sitting. Uh, very simple and straightforward. Now, once you get to that point, you're going to run some wires. And if you're looking at the fans, you can see that they're a black and a red wire from this fan and a black and a red wire from this fan. So those wires, if they're long enough, you can run them directly to your switches and everything. And if they're not, then you would have to add a little bit of wire to them. But I'm going to show you that we were able to run the two black wires right here, which are the ground wires, directly to our grounding bus in the airplane. That takes care of the ground for the fan number one and the ground for fan number two. The red wires we were able to run as well. We got we haven't tightened these tie wraps yet, so but we routed the wires here and here. And we we actually elected talking to Bill, the builder of the airplane. He lives in Texas and he said, Well, I'm not gonna use that heater all the time. So I don't really need to take up panel space uh, with it. So it's accessible, but we put it on the side of this console here. We have the breaker and then the switch. The wiring of the switch is shown. We're not gonna really go into that in this little video because it's shown on the wire diagram. But basically, once you have wired the switch, you know, you're gonna bring power from the airplane bus to the breaker, from the breaker to the switch. The two red wires from the heater are going to the switch. And those, you just follow the wire diagram. The purpose of the wiring is to, when you put power to the airplane, one direction will turn two fans on. And you kind of hear that now, it's a little bit louder than it will be when I do one fan. I'm gonna turn it back off. And this here, Bill is gonna put a little support so that this is a little stiffer because right now, of course, it's just temporarily installed. Uh, not the switches, but the, the panel. Now, if I move it down, we have just a single fan. And I can feel that when I put my hand underneath. Don't put your fingers up in the fans. I tried that one time, not fun. All right, and that's basically it. Some people ask, well, do I need to put a valve somewhere in the hose to or from the heater core in order to reduce the heat that might be coming from the coolant just flowing through the heating element during summer months? And the answer to that is no, you don't. The, there will be a little bit of heat on the heating element when you put your hand on it, but nothing that would affect the temperature inside the airplane. Airplanes have a lot more draft than a car uh, if you want to compare it to something. So adding an external like a heater valve is, is, if the fans are off, you're not really getting any heat. So I would not complicate the system by adding a valve. And that's it for the Viking 130 heater installation. If you have a different Viking engine, it's very similar. It's just the locations of, the, of where you mount the hoses to the engine that might be slightly different.